The next time you're at Dollar Tree, make sure you head to their frame section and grab some of these gold frames. And I'm going to begin by removing the backing and then taking out the matte border as well as the cardboard so I have just the glass and the frame. I'm then going to come in with some wire cutters and I'm going to pull out the black tabs that keep the backing on and remove those as well. Then I'm going to take out the glass and I'm going to come with some E6000 and I'm going to glue the glass inside the frame. So I just go all around the frame with the glue and then I place the glass back inside to glue it in place. Once I've done all my frames, I'm then going to come and take eight of the frames and I'm going to glue two of them together. So eight frames total glued two together. And I do this by using the same E6000, making sure I flip it over and wipe away any excess glue that oozes out in between. And then I'm going to clamp them together and I'm going to let this set overnight. I was noticing when I placed the clamps on the frames to clamp the two together, they did kind of raise up and bow up at the corners there. So I just placed some heavier objects on top to keep them flat and straight while they were setting. I came back the next day, removed all my heavy objects that I placed on top, and then as well removed the clamps from all the frames. And these frames are really solid glued together here. Then I'm going to take the remaining two frames that are not glued to any other frames and I'm going to lay them out here on how I'm going to glue this together. So I'm going to glue all the sides and then I'm going to just raise them up here and build a rectangular shape. So two frames on each end and then the two that are glued together for the sides. Again, after I've done this, it is standing so we don't need to clamp it, but I am going to let this set overnight again, making sure that the glue is really solid. Once it's set, you can see here I can move it around. It is completely solid. It does not move. It's not flimsy. And then I'm just going to come in and finish it up with a nice A-frame top with my remaining four frames. And then I'm going to just connect them together into an A-frame shape and letting that set as well overnight. Then when I am finished, here is my project. It is a beautiful terrarium that I can use to place my potted plants. And I like the sides open on the A-frame part so that I can just stick my sprayer in there and water my plants as need be. This is a decorative little elegant house for me to store my house plants. And now I have one of those gorgeous A-frame terrariums that you see at high-end decor stores that I made for as little as under $10 and the cost of some glue. I really hope that you enjoyed this project. Thank you so much for tuning into Home Talk, and we'll see you on another video. I'm just going to take a piece of paper here and a pencil and kind of trace to the inside, and then we'll use some painter's tape. So it's going to go about. We're going to go ahead and use this beautiful vintage blue color. We're just going to do one coat and then we're going to go back over it again at the end after we've applied our molds. Okay, now that our mirror is painted with our first coat, we're just going to go ahead and set this aside and then we're going to work on making our molds. Our molds are going to go over the top of these existing metal leaves here. We're going to be using some air dry clay and this beautiful mold here with these leaf elements. This is super pliable, super easy, nice and soft clay to work with. So we're actually going to use um, a few different sizes of the leaves here in this mold. So I'm just going to place it down in there. You can use a little bit of, of cornstarch corn in these molds. These are silicone um, and they are food grade safe. And one of the things I love about this particular brand of mold is that it does have a nice micro rim edge. So you get a nice clean edge without a ton of um, little flyaways that hang over. So I'm just going to pop this one out. And you can see all the detailing there in that, in that leaf. So just um, make all of the leaves and the flowers, whatever you want to use to add it to your mirror, make them all up, and then we're actually gonna be gluing them on wet. So now that all my mold pieces are done here, we're just kind of laying them out 
to figure out where we want the placement of them. And I kind of like how this is looking, but I do think I want to just cut off the stems because to me it kind of looks like they're just, um, there's just a little bit too much going on there. So I'm just gonna give these guys just a little trim off the ends here, this little spatula knife. And some of these will have to be kind of molded and twisted a little bit to the other direction since that's the direction the leaves are on the framework. Um, so you can manipulate them a bit. So now what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna stuff this back in my bag, the excess. And you can just put your air dry clay right in um, a Ziploc baggie and it will keep for a very long time. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take, lift each piece up. I'm going to apply some E6000 glue and then we're gonna glue them to the metal frame. All right, we're gonna let this set up a bit and then we'll move on to the next step. Now that our molds have fully dried, we're just gonna head back outside here and give it another coat over the top of the uh, dry clayed area. Now that our paint's dry, I've removed the protective backer sheet, the paper that we had on here, and we're going to use some denatured alcohol to thoroughly clean the glass before we, we apply our transfer. So I'm just gonna get a bit on my paper towel here. And then we're just gonna simply wipe over the mirror. So we're going to be using a sheet or a section of a sheet of this decor transfer by Iron Orchid Designs. It's got some beautiful floral elements in here and I've gone ahead and I'm going with a red flower because I think that will look nice with the teal. So this is the one we're going to be using. So I'm just going to pull it out of the, sh the book here. And we're actually only going to be using a small section. You can see the uh, decor transfer has nice grid lines on it so that you can uh, pick and choose where you want to cut it and just use that particular section on your project. And then you can just save the remainder for another project. Each one of the transfer packets come with this nice little applicator stick. So once you kind of have it figured out where you want to place your design, just remove this protective backer. This kind of keeps dust and debris from sticking to your transfer. And then you're just going to um, lay it down where you want it. And you really want to be pretty sure where it's going because it will stick pretty quickly to that glass once you put any kind of pressure on it. And I think that looks lovely right there. So we're just going to start rubbing over it with the stick. You can tape it down with painter's tape if you need any help um, holding it in place, but usually they stick pretty good to glass. So you don't really have a lot of shifting. If you pick up the paper and there's a little piece stuck on there, you just lay it right back down and go right over it again. These can be applied to wood, glass, metal, um, furniture, you name it. Take our wax ba uh, backer sheet and we're just going to kind of rub over the image, making sure that we get everything firmly pressed down. Now to clean this, I get asked this question a lot, you know, how do you clean this? You just use a soft cloth like a uh, microfiber towel um, and go over the top of it and um, it, will, it will be stuck on here really well. So that's our project for today. So thanks for watching everyone. Until next time, I'm Jerry with The Weathered Shed. We'll see you back here on Home Talk. Mm -hmm.